Well, hello and welcome back to another Market Conversations. I hope you're all well tonight. I see we've got some folks early. Ellie Poole, Edward, nice to see you. DC Precise P. Kelly, good evening. Hey guys, tonight I wanted to talk about how not all things are created equal, right? What that basically means is let's distill some of the complexity in these topics that we talk about all the time. Now, I have caught myself talking about personal strategies that I'm employing. I've caught myself saying, you know, kind of inferring that they're kind of a one size fits all deal sometimes. Well, the truth about investing is that nothing is one size fits all that every person's unique situation is unique unto themselves. And although we can glean a lot from other people's thoughts, education, research, ideas, it's important for us to do the work to flesh out these ideas, concepts, policies, procedures, and make sure that they fit for us. Case in point, I wanted to really highlight something tonight. Producer Brady, <clears throat> good old producer Brady, was following a, I believe it was a Mark Kohler live stream. And Brady asked a question. Here is his question. Let me go to my banner. So I put it up. Bang. Should I borrow against my Bitcoin or keep it in my Roth? The next five minutes that came after it caught me off guard because I don't think Mark truly understood the context of Brady's question. I'm going to bring in Brady here pretty soon and we're going to flesh this out because there are two things that I believe all of us have a vested interest in, right? It's getting the highest return on our investment and then keeping as much of that as humanly and legally possible. What I'm talking about is how can we structure the capital that our investments are going to create in the either the lowest form of taxation or no taxation. This is an incredibly interesting topic for me, and I think for you as well. Chime in with your comments, please, as we go through this. Ask specific, specific questions, and Brady and I will do everything we can to ensure that we address them. So without any further ado, let's bring in producer Brady and... This is the gentleman's show on YouTube that Brady reached out to. So, Brady, take a couple of minutes and set this up for us. What frame of mind were you in? What, what led you to uh, Mark Kohler's channel? And then, obviously, the context behind the question that you submitted. So, as my usual YouTube perusings go, you know, whatever... Whatever content is suggested next is either what just happens to come on next or I scroll through it and anyway, came across this guy and his perspective is very interesting because I think he's a lawyer in addition to being a CPA. So he's very hands-on with his um, help and as you'll see, or at least if you follow him, you'll see his live streams. And it's literally just him, some of his people that work at his company as lawyers, and just, you know, three or four different streams of people or his shows broadcast on multiple platforms that have multiple comment sections. So it's a smorgasbord of learning about new things, i.e. taxes and this, that, and the other. So he goes into literally how to help people given whatever information he has. So he kind of took my question that 
I was basically trying to figure out, does it make much sense to have $6,000 go into a Roth before you put it into Bitcoin so that when you do want to cash out in uh, post-retirement, there are tax benefits that you have because it was accruing value in that certain um, retirement account? Or do you just plow everything into Bitcoin let it hang out on Nexo so you're earning interest and then borrow against it at a reasonable you know ratio and go from there and use the the tax benefits of or only paying the tax on the interest owed and not the full amount and going at it from that approach so that was right. kind of my you know which which one makes sense or at least is it quantifiable to a point where you can you know, o- over 20 or 30 years, would it be a good idea or a bad idea? And, you know, do the, do the end, does the ROI end up getting closer and closer together or just in the opposite directions? Well, so I, I, when I, I found, it. so when I tuned into it and, and found out that it was you, you were the Brady in question. I saw the video. <laughs> I was like, wow. So real quick, Michael, thank you for tuning in. Tony, Scorpion. Uh, Kathleen from Hawaii, great to have you. Aloha, Jungle Inc., Crypto Kahana, hey, another Aloha, mi amigo. Um, you know, I knowing you and then seeing the question, I know what you were asking. The right. response that Mark gave, though, I found really interesting, and I wanted to explore that for a minute. So Mark's response to your question was, Here's Brady. Brady's got an income. Brady could start a crypto IRA, invest into crypto. Brady could have a employer matched 401k. Or Brady could just have the 401k employer match, take his after-tax dollars, invest into Bitcoin, collateralize a loan against the Bitcoin to start a new self-sponsored Roth IRA. And when I started to think about that, I started to think about two things. One, the debt service on the collateral, right? So if you're going to collateralize a loan, you're putting your assets up to get a capital distribution to yourself. Now, I've done this many times. Matter of fact, I was able to acquire a lot of assets, much lower than market price today, doing that. However, my strategy had me buying assets that I could put immediately back on that lending platform to earn interest. Because I always want to earn more interest on my uncollateralized assets than the interest that I need to pay for the loan that I took that ties up and collateralizes that loan. The methodology that Mark ran out of the tape, you know, ran down was basically predicated on on a couple of things. One, that there aren't violent swings in the market. If you take a loan and you collateralize your assets, so let's say you have $100 of Bitcoin, you take a $50 loan, if Bitcoin drops and you get to, like on Nexo, an 83.1% loan-to-value ratio, your assets will be sold to pay the debt service. This is not an advantageous position to be in as a digital asset investor. And so with that, I was thinking to myself, Mark has been, he, he kind of was thinking linearly like, Bitcoin's always going to appreciate. And in that situation, it's not a bad idea. But I don't see this market stabilizing anytime soon. I think we are going to have three steps forward, two steps back for the next couple of years. It's going to take, I don't know, upwards to a five to ten trillion dollar asset class before we start to minimize 
some of this volatility. And I think it boils down to we have to understand our market that we are in. Retail investors come in. They get a piece. They're not as sophisticated as the uh, career investor, so to speak. And prices in the market, right, have a tendency to create behavioral action from market participants. But that's only one part of it. When you see, violent, you know, uh, quickly appreciating assets, FOMO occurs. So you get people buying in who have only bought in for the purpose of the thing is going up. Not for the long-term ramifications of the technology or any of that type of stuff. So when the price starts falling dramatically, they bail. Well, why does the price fall dramatically? That is the question. We have to understand that in addition to the retail investors that are coming in because the price is going up and they won't sell until the price goes down, what causes the price to go down? It's the speculative nature. It's the speculators. These folks that come in and speculate in a market where you can get upwards to 100 times leverage on the underlying asset. Well, when you are using that kind of leverage, 10 times leverage up to 100 times leverage, any small bump in the road will create a large cavernous pothole quickly. It's the unwind of the leverage. And until crypto is no longer a fun place to employ those methods, we will continue to see this type of stuff until we get to escape velocity and we've reached a market cap far north of where we are today. So BZ, nice to have you. Simon, great to see you chiming in with comments. Doodler for XRP, good to have you. So, you know, as we as we look into this this strategy that Mark Kohler prescribed for you, it really leads me back to a couple of basic questions. And that is, as an investor individually, what are your goals? Right? Every person's got different goals. Every person's got, um, you know, you could easily say, I invest because I want to be rich. Okay, that's great. But that's not really defined. And it's hard to know what, what is rich. Right. If, if you're if you're if your currency is debasing at 20 percent per year, right, 20 cents of every dollar is being just kind of diluted away. What is rich? Do any of us really have that defined? I have it defined in the ability to um, secure my forever home, whether that be property in construction or already built, whatever. But acquire that have an income source that's going to meet all of my needs for the rest of my life. And there are things that I still want to do. I'd like to be able to travel. And that is not a cheap endeavor at my age. I'm not willing to, you know, backpack and bus across the world. I want to get on a plane. I want to stay in hotels and things of that nature. It's not a, I want to become kind of touristy. My, my youth, my youth hostel days are over, I think. And um, so, you know, I have I have things, I have aspirations. So I'm going to need, you know, a, a large amount of capital. And in this economic environment, that capital requirement kind of seems to go up every year. So when I first came to crypto, I thought if my investments created a million dollar portfolio, I would be set for life. That was only three years ago. Well, a little over three years ago, three and a half years ago. Three and a half years ago, I had forecasted that a million dollars would set me for life. It's not the case anymore. So back to everybody should know or, or be aware of their plan, their strategy, how it fits in the world. Is it going to fit in the world next year? Do I need to go back and revisit it and tweak it and da 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 <clears throat> 
that's enough of that. Let's get it back. Let's steer the ship back to the Mark Kohler thing. So Brady asked this question, right? The um, should I borrow against my Bitcoin or keep it in my Roth? Well, let's look at the pros and cons of both sides. Okay, Brady. Sound good? Yep. Brady's nodding, but we can't see him because he's not on camera. <laughs> so always nod. Having your portfolio in your control or pseudo control in the form of using a Celsius or a Nexo, if you understand the platform risk for the yield that you're getting for your assets that you could not get in a safer, less risky situation, like these proof of stake protocols that allow you to have your own wallet on your own computer where you hold the private keys and you're just pointing the voting or governance power of the amount of tokens you have and you're receiving a reward from that. If you have to go outside of that to like a Nexa or a Celsius or BlockFi or Abra or Voyager or whatever, there's a little bit of risk, right? There's risk that that company could blow up and you could lose your stuff. If you acknowledge that and understand that and feel that the return that they're giving you on your letting them hold your assets is worth it, that is one way to accrue or compound more of your asset than if you believe over time will capital appreciate. Most of these platforms will not lock you up unless you elect to be locked up. So for instance, I can pull my assets off of BlockFi or Celsius anytime I want. On Nexo, I've chosen some of my assets to get locked up in 30 day contracts. I get a little extra interest, but I cannot move those assets until that 30 day contract is over. If you go into a Roth, you ain't getting it. You have no access to that capital or those assets until you one, officially retire, and you can officially retire at any age, but you have to officially retire or turn 58 and a half to start having access to these retirement accounts. Well, if you're 50 years old, that may not be a bad idea. If you're 55, that might not be a bad idea. You have to weigh the pros and cons. But if you're 25, you have to start thinking to yourself, hmm, what is my time horizon and do I want to wait? Right? Brady, what are the questions that went through your mind as you were thinking about these kind of two paradoxes, right? Self-control where you can have do whatever you want, whenever you want, or being subject to the criteria of the retirement plan itself, i.e. either official retirement or uh, the, the age stuff, you know, 58 and a half years old. Well, it's, it's interesting what you had just mentioned right now about officially retiring actually reminded me of that actual, or, or at least I think I had forgotten that it's, some, it's not necessarily something that you have to wait for, a.k.a. 58 and a half. You could declare it sooner, which ironically is sort of what I would be at least trying to get myself in the position to or steer towards with the with owning Bitcoin in the first place. So I guess now now that I'm thinking about it, because you can only put a or because the Roth contribution is capped maybe in order to get the best of both and because I would or at least the goal would be to not have to wait till 58 and a half and that I could take it sooner but only because I could afford to retire sooner aka make what I had purchased well no because then the other thing is I wouldn't sell it I so yeah, right, questions. So what's the benefit in having what's the benefit in having an asset if you can only sell it once even though you don't pay taxes on it? If you can sell an asset more than once but pay a smaller amount of tax. I don't know. See, I don't I don't understand. You you lost me at the sell an asset twice. 
I, I, so, I think I think the whole point of cryptocurrencies is they solved the double spend problem. Uh, <laughs> how do you sell? You are, you are how true. do you sell your Bitcoin twice? If you can what figure meant, that out and we can do it, I'm all, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm in, baby. <laughs> what I meant to say was, <clears throat> you can only profit from the sale of an asset oh, right. once. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So it's sure that that's tax free. Well, great, it's over. And you can only put, you know, given the time frame and the amount. Well, and this could be different to your point. You know, if you're 50 and looking at eight and a half years versus someone who's 25 and looking at more years, there could be an in between there. But it seems like if it's capped, it if your contribution is capped and you can only sell it once, and you're not collecting interest on it. And you don't have control. It, it just seems, it seems like the the benefits aren't really there, because in the end you just sell it once and then you're done. It's like, oh, you mean I don't, I don't, I don't get it back and I don't have more of it. What, what the? So it's, you know, when it, you bring that's a really good point. Let me say hello to Gary real quick, and he's got a great point, and I'm going to address it in a minute. Hi, Lori. Um, I had a conversation with my son, who is 23 and working in, believe it or not, Green Bay, Wisconsin, home of the Packers. Thank you. Um, and I was talking to him about this. He does not have a large income. As a matter of fact, if you break down a $6,000 a year um, contribution schedule, that's $500 a month. How many of you out there are able to invest $500 a month? I know that is a large sum of money each month for a lot of people, right? Some not so much, but for a lot of people, an extra $500 a month to invest is, is, is a big, it's a big deal. And so what I was telling him is I, I was like, okay, check this out. I know that your employer is offering you this matched 401k thing and they'll match up to five. Uh, uh, they match up to five grand a year. So you could put in five, they'll match five and anything over that you want to contribute, you can. And there's a limit of like 19,000 or whatever, whatever the max deal is. But here's what you got to think about. That pre-tax money for a 401k is going to get taxed on the backside. So the truth is, and you don't have a lot of control over what assets you invest in, it's really not a good deal. It's great for Wall Street because they get their fees no matter what, right? T. Rowe Price and Fidelity and da 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 All these people that offer these 401ks, they're getting paid whether you profit or loss. They're getting paid. All right. Let's move on. I don't, I don't, I'm not a big fan of 401ks. I think they're a big money suck. I think they're a waste of your time and energy. But if you want to look at a, a retirement plan, you want to look at solo 401ks that are self-directed that you completely control. Uh, you want to look at Roth IRAs where you're taking already tax dollars and putting them into investments that will accrue or appreciate tax-free Something that you could do if you know you can't invest more than $500 a month might not be a bad idea for a young person. As a young person, a good strategy would be to work and make as much money trading your time for currency units as possible and then stack as many of those currency units in investments that would accrue tax-free. That would be the ultimate situation. And maybe you don't retire at an age, you retire at a portfolio value. And that's what I, that's the conversation I have with my son. If you're 23 now and you work your butt off and you're able to get in a hundred, 200, $300 a month into your Roth crypto IRA, and the projects that you've directed that already tax dollars to 
appreciate to a point where you have a portfolio value that makes it worth it for you to officially retire. You officially retire, you get access to the funds. Don't sell the funds. Start earning yield on those funds. If you've got a million, two million dollar crypto portfolio, it would not be difficult to earn $50,000 a year in relatively low risk yield mechanisms. I'm talking about your platforms like Celsius, Nexo, BlockFi, etc. You're in five, six percent on a couple of million. You're doing great. Now you're going to have income tax that you're liable for on that yield, but you won't be eroding your capital. And even if you did want to sell some of that original asset, you could take a lump sum and it would be tax free. There are advantages to different strategies, but they're really relative to your specific goals, risk tolerance, time horizon, high bidder that, you know, th there's a lot of factors. So everybody and hello, Edward should have a grasp on what their situation is and then seek out the processes and mechanisms that will allow you to produce the results to meet your goals. So I saw, I didn't get, I want to get to Gary's question here real quick. In a self-directed solo 401k, you can invest in crypto and take up to a 50% loan too. <clears throat> that is wonderful. However, from what I understand, Gary, and I could be wrong, this is not, I, I'm, I'm not Mark Kohler, but from what I understand, for solo 401ks are just self-directed 401ks that you start on your own and they have the same, you have to roll them into a Roth. You have to roll your solo 401k into a Roth or have it with a company like Nolo or somebody that already has a rollover mechanism as part of the construction of their deal. It's complicated unless you know. So you go research these things, take a look at them. I'd be curious to know, Gary, if you personally have done this, it would really be interesting to me. Um, let's see, we got uh, Jungle chimes in. I understand the appeal of Ross, but I'll take the tax savings today and use that capital to acquire more assets. If you don't have a tax liability, then Roth is the no-brainer. I am a little stumped by this, and I know that Jungle knows exactly what he's talking about. I understand the appeal of Ross, but I'll take the tax savings today. I'll use that capital to acquire more assets. If you don't have a tax liability, boy, that I'd love to flesh that out. I wonder if Jungle would accept a 10 minute invite, come on the channel and discuss that because I'm not clear what that meant. Jungle's a lot smarter than I am. You got to dumb it down for the old guy, Jungle. <coughs> My dog. I have a soft drop before I'm okay, so I'm not limited to funds. Okay, okay. What has he got here? They sell your assets on retirement loans, okay? Be self directed, doesn't have to be solo. Okay. Again, I'm still lost on the liability with the Roth thing. My entire understanding of a Roth IRA is that your assets appreciate with no tax liability on the backside. So whether I take that asset and I sell it, whether I take that asset that I might have, let's say, bought Bitcoin at $1,000 and that Bitcoin in 20 years is now worth, let's say, a million dollars and I officially retire, I invested a thousand, but it's now worth a million, it comes into my possession, I have no tax liability. Now, what I decide to do with it, if I sell it, there's no tax liability. If I, assign, if I decide to start earning yield on it, the only liability I will incur is the income from the actual interest that I've earned. Nothing to do with the underlying million dollar Bitcoin that was sitting there to generate the yield. Let's get my man Jungle a friggin' invite. So how do I do that, Brady? Stop sharing the screen so I can get to the toolbar. Invite. 
copied the clipboard. Yeah. Got it. I'm going to my trusty email. Going to my trusty contacts list. I you like how I play. give the play by play of I mean I, okay, I, well, now I'm I didn't art. now I'm gonna I burn. didn't <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt, but now now I'm wondering or I'm trying to follow you uh, follow along your path and where I'm getting hung up is say say your son puts in um Kelly. Or what was it? The example that you had given. Well, he puts- my, here, my son. My son was, Dad. I'm just going to use the Schwab account, right? He's got a Schwab brokerage account that I set up for him, and I said that's great. But you got to understand, anything that that generates, as far as the appreciation, you're going to be taxed for if you ever sell it or need to use it. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I walk him through the whole thing. I said at your at your price point, right? You're making. $18 an hour. You're not going to get rich trading your time for $18 an hour. But if you can scrape some of that capital and get it into a vehicle that will allow you to access assets that have huge capital uh, appreciation upside and not have to deal with the tax liability of that capital appreciation, you will be very happy. It took a, you know, this is an hour long so conversation. So it would basically be. Go ahead. But how It'd would he basically. get his, how would the million come out? Like how would the, how the connection between the Roth and the yield. You officially. I think is where I'm getting. You, offic- you officially retire. You put on your 1040 for the year that you retire, officially retired. Bam. You're allowed access okay. to your Roth IRA. You take that Roth IRA and now you start utilizing the financial system you have around you, right? You've got access to Nexo, Celsius, BlockFi, Abra, Voyager. Pick the one you like the best that has the best terms that you feel the most comfortable with. You park your thing on there. It's earning you yield. You scrape off the yield, having it become what they call interest dividend But income. are you... But are you selling the assets out of the Roth and then depositing that? Are you liquidating and then putting the... No, 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 no. You take possession of the Bitcoin coming out of the Roth. You you don't... It's not a... It's oh, not they send a, it to you. Well, yeah, it's yours. They're just merely a custodian. So they're holding what you essentially dollar cost averaged into. But then... Or I guess I always assumed that in order to exit it, or that when you would you have sold to sell it, it. well, you sell you, it, and that's the, the money US that you dollars. get, right? No. So then, no. what's so then the fee that you would pay for them to do that is just the because Your they were bequeathed the whatever. Fees. Yeah, your fees. Right. Okay, so for instance, a lot of the viewers on my channel have used hi j par and hi kelly slate have used i trust capital i i like i trust capital right big fan big supporter that's why i you know have them as an affiliate <clears throat> you pay them a fee right you're 20 a month that fee is what supports their business they are only a customer custodian for your assets in this wonderfully little legal tax shelter they call a Roth IRA and when it is time for you to get it whether it is your official retirement or you will you know actually retire 58 and a half 65 whatever the deal is you can't retire before 58 and a half unless you officially retire from the whole game like you can't you can't leave your 40 hour a day a 40 hour a week job to get a 20 hour a week job and be officially retired you can't do that until you get 58 years old and then you can do that you can leave your full time job take a little part time job it's kind of like the the way social security works uh no jungle i didn't send it on twitter but i can i sent it to your email address but i'm happy to go to twitter 
and send it. Oops, why am I blocked? I'm not blocked. And send. So now you both, you Jungle, you've got an invite at Twitter and you've got an invite in your email. Whichever one works best for you. So does that so, make a little more sense, Brady? Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to compare... I'm, I'm trying to compare the, the $6,000 either going in either direction and what you'd be doing with the Roth is paying for their custodial fees so that when you when they're allowed to give it to you, you don't pay the tax on the value that it has accrued or you give it to Nexo and you get to collect interest on it, but not necessarily, or at least the, the only tax benefits you would get is lowering it to the interest that you have to pay on it. So I guess it's, it comes down to, is the interest that you're receiving on it outpay, like does it, because it's, or I guess does the interest you earn make more than the fees you give them in order I don't know, I guess now that I'm now that I'm yeah, learning you're, more you're and not more. Factor, you're not factoring in the tax liability of the of the liquidation of the asset if need be. Right? If you need to liquidate the asset, it came out of a Roth, you're scot free. If you're doing it the way you're doing it now, like the way I'm doing it now, I'm just accumulating assets and drawing yield, and I have no intention to sell the assets. Matter of fact, I'm compounding my yield, but when I start to draw my yield, I'll be in what they call an income not a, a capital gain, capital loss, because I'm just scraping the income. It's no different than scraping the money off the dividends of stocks and things of that nature. So one's, one's, a, one's an asset, one's an income. Income tax is interest and dividends. When you sell an asset, that's capital gain, capital loss. All right. So you're not factoring in the self-directed. We got jungle in the house. We'll come back to that, Brady. Let's bring right. in the man. He's somewhere in there. Jungle, <laughs> welcome to the show. Is this an imposter? Did some, did some <laughs> is somebody duping us here? <laughs> You're getting let's hosed, give it Jerry. let's give him let's give him a minute to to see if this mic works. Maybe he's gotta plug it in or something. But um so th that's the real that's the name of the game, right? If Let's start with the premise that, number one, you're investing in digital assets that you honestly believe are going to massively appreciate over time. Let's start with that premise. If that's the case, then you're either, A, going to need to find a legal shelter that will absolve you from the tax liability when it comes time to deal with it, or you figure out a way to never deal with it. That's kind of the strategy I'm taking to never deal with it. Full control of my assets now, earn yield, let it compound. When I need to start drawing an income, I will. And if I need a massive expenditure, you know, buy a piece of property, build a house, that kind of stuff, I'll just take a loan against the collateral and still earn more interest because I will never take a loan that has me not earning more interest than the interest that I need to pay on the loan. But do you, do you think it would make sense or say if we replaced the, say the, the property replaced or the property Bitcoin was replaced with real estate property. Okay. Would Roths still be a good idea? Again, it, it depends on what, okay, so who is the Roth? What are the costs of the Roth? Not all Roths are, uh, are created equal. Like, for instance, I have a Roth in my Charles Schwab account. It costs me zero. I have no monthly fee, no maintenance cost. Free commissions on all trades within the Roth. And within the Roth, I can trade PG&E stock for Amazon stock or Amazon stock for Apple stock 
with no commissions, no fees, no ill consequence. So that's, you know, that's the Schwab way. TD Ameritrade has one. Fidelity has one. These crypto companies, Kingdom Trust, I Trust Capital, da 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 they all have them, but they're all a little different. I Trust, who is my favorite crypto Roth IRA, charges you a monthly fee. And there's a little a fee when you trade within the Roth. So if you're trading Bitcoin for Cardano or whatever. Now, some of them are starting to catch up, right? I'm hearing talk that within your iTrust Capital, pretty soon, not only will you be able to acquire Cardano, but you'll be able to stake the Cardano and allow the yield to compound within your Roth and have all the same tax treatment of tax-free appreciation. Pete Kelly, great question. If you, if you never plan on selling, what would be the benefit of a Roth over just buying assets and putting them on EXO? None. But let me ask you this, Pete. How many times have you ever had a plan that was executed to perfection over a 10 year period of time or a 20 year period of time as a member of the divorced three times club. And I never had it. I mean, every time I said I do, I meant it. It was commitment for life. Plans don't always work out the way you want them to. And I'm not advocating either position here. I'm just saying, Everybody should be very cognizant of their own situation, their own reality, their own goals, their own amount of resources they have to invest and devise a plan that meets your goals with your capital, your resources and the things that you want to do. Bada bing, bada boom. I mean, that's the whole reason the Patreon group was formed, right? The Patreon Club Beyond Moon was so that people could get one-on-one -on -one input and feedback. And I'll use my experience. They'll use their experience. We'll research things together and we'll devise plans that are best suited for their specific situation. Oh, look at this, the man, the myth. Now I'll tell you, I just, real quick, I know I'm taking a side note away from the topic, I'm on YouTube because of Jungle Link. I did my very first on-camera thing with Jungle Link. One of the most gracious ambassadors to the crypto scene is this young man we're about to bring on camera. Uh, when you put your camera back on you, Jungle, I'll bring you in studio. That'll be my little cue. When I see your camera come on, I'll bring you back in. So let's see here. Steve's got a great comment. Is iTrust Capital International? No. No, they're not. And I see Jungle on camera. Let's bring him in. Jungle. Hey, buddy. How you doing? I'm doing really good. Looks like you've got a gorgeous little person on your lap. Well, thank you so much. Hi, Princess. Get... Say hi to Jerry. <laughs> We're getting ready to take a little road trip here. Good for you. Hey, clarify what you were talking about because I'm. I just. I'm sorry. I. I it, it wasn't on the same page with or something. I just went right over my head. All right. Well, first I have to tell you this. Everyone that I discuss this with disagrees with me. Every financial planner. Everyone. Everything you said is correct. So you wait till retirement age. You're off. Uh, earnings, you get to take everything out tax free. You can do, you know, everything at once and pay off, you know, homes and do all sorts of stuff. You can take it over time. Totally tax free appreciation. What I'm saying, what I personally prefer to do is put it into a tax deductible, either a 401k, a SEP, a simple. Take those extra funds that I've saved, saved in a given year and also invest that into more assets. So, I'm going to get a bunch of taxable accounts, but when you figure out, let's say you put whatever the limit is, nineteen five. If I save sixty eight hundred dollars in tax, I want to take that sixty eight hundred dollars in tax, 
and buying more XRP, Bitcoin, stock, whatever it is. And I think, you know, you, every 10 years, you'll get an extra six or $70,000 invested. I figure by retirement age, yes, it'll all be taxable. Hopefully, I won't need to draw that much on it anyway by that point. So I'm right. saying I would rather have the extra cash today than the tax-free attributes tomorrow. Okay, so you're an advocate of um, getting tax-free dollars in because, well, I mean, that would make sense if the model is while the prices are low, if I can buy two of something today and pay 20, 30% tax on it later, but if I wait, right, if I have to use already tax dollars, I'm actually going to get less of that thing. Therefore, the multipliers, right? When you think orders of magnitude, multipliers come into effect. I would have to run some math on that. That that's an interesting. That's a very interesting thing. That you and just, assuming assuming you are taking that extra money in your pocket and actually investing it, you know, most people would just take all right, fine. Every paycheck, I make a little more in my pocket because of that tax deferred, you know, uh, uh, retirement contribution. They just spend it on and maybe a new car or you know, fun times and whatnot. So, I mean, you have to actually take that extra cash and, and invest it, and hopefully into things that grow and over time. No, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. And I think you really illustrate a great point that I'm always trying to like drive home here. Every single one of us, believe it or not, is unique, right? Time horizon risk tolerance, the amount of capital that we can invest, the, the, you know, the cost of our lifestyle, the things that we are willing to sacrifice. Some people are not willing to sell all their shit, move to Costa Rica and live on $350 a month until their crypto makes them filthy rich. I get it. Some people like having a car. Some people like going out to restaurants. Some people want to go out to a movie theater or go out on a date. I totally get that. So everybody's thing is different. And if you're finding something that works for you and that you can sleep at night and, and that's the, that's the whole game. Why should any of us adopt a strategy that stresses us out? Right. Right. Causes us to doubt ourselves. Cause at the end of the day, if you're wealthy and you're not happy or unhealthy, what's the point? You know, you bring up a good point about there's no one plan for everyone. I was going over this, you know, with, with the client and we were talking about, it. I said, look, man, you are throwing away $1,600 a year in taxes. If you invest that right now. That's 68,000 invested over the next 10 years. You get into good stuff. It's going to grow. You're probably going to work another 30 years. Anyway, he told me, hey, I don't care about any of that. I want to invest this. I don't want to ever touch it. I don't need it. I got rental real estate. I got all sorts of other stuff. I will never draw on this. I want to leave this to my beneficiaries tax-free. And I don't want to take RMDs if I live long enough where a regular deductible retirement account, they make you start taking it out. He goes, yeah. I want this to be in this account, grow for my whole life, however long that is, and just go off it was his children. I want to go off to my children totally tax free. So all my calculations for him meant nothing. He, he didn't yeah. care about any of that. He, you know, had what, like you said, everyone wants something a little different. And, uh, you know, he was able to do in his job a Roth 401k. So not the smaller Roth IRA limits to the full amount of the 401k, put that into a Roth and uh, do that. Right on. Yeah. I've got a lot of people in the Patreon group jungle that are doing, 401k conversions, right? So they've been with a job, they did stacked up this 401k. Um, you know, a lot of people aren't really aware of the thievery that goes on by Wall Street as it pertains to retirement plans. And so I'd say, grab your perspectives. Let's take a look at this. Let's just kind of analyze this. Some of these folks had up to six different fees on an yes. annual basis which related to upwards to sometimes in one case, 6% of yeah. their contributions <laughs> were getting paid to the people that are managing 
the stupid retirement account. Right. Yeah, you know, I was really lucky before I became self-employed. The employer I worked with, he let us have a, a self-directed 401k. So all of our contributions and his matches went directly into a Charles Schwab account. So, you you know, any stocks or bonds, we didn't have any, any crypto outside of GBTC back then. But um, it, it was a pretty good setup. I like that better than you work at a job and they give you 10 funds, which who knows what those are. And that's all you can invest in. Right. And then you look at the fees involved in them and it's like, yeah. okay. For me to outpace just the monetary expansion, this thing needs to go up 25% a year. And I'm telling you, 401ks and mutual funds do not accrue at 25% a year. If you can find one that'll post numbers around 12 to 14%, you're lucky. But then you start digging through the fees and you go, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's, it is accruing at 12 to 14% a year, but they're taking 6% of it. Right. It, Absolutely. It's, it's highway rivalry. I just think it is one of the biggest scams in the world. You will never find me doing that. Well, I tell not, you what. Now, no. I, uh, I better get back to packing. I'm going to be in trouble if the wife gets back and I'm not ready to go. But I tell you this uh, just really enjoy your show. It's unlike anything else out there. You know, oh, thank you. You know what I'm talking about? The, the, crypt, the regular crypto stuff. We all kind of do very similar stuff. This is a special show, and uh, I really enjoy it. Try to tune in as much as I can and also tell as many people about it because, again, you cover a, a wide variety of topics and ones that need to be covered. These are you know, high-level shows you do, and uh, I just I just really enjoy it. Well, Jungle, I just think, you, you know, I, I will, you will forever be in my heart. You embraced me when I first got here. You've encouraged me and inspired me, and, there, and I will tell you on your part, there's not a guy in the business that does editorial like you are, like you. You're, you are the king at what well, you do. Thank you, buddy. I really appreciate it. All right. All right. You I'm enjoy your in. weekend. You too. All right. You Peace soon. out. Bye, Bye, princess. Have a good night. Yeah. Great seeing Jungle. I just love Jungle to death. Let's see here. I, I know I said hi to Bitter. Did I say hi to Biotech Breakout? He's got a little statement. Let's throw this up. If a company is offering matching funds in a 401k, that's an automatic 100% profit. Crypto investment is possible via several ETFs. Da, 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 da. Biotech. It's not an automatic profit. I was just telling Jungle, and I will tell you and anybody within the sound of my voice, if your company match at the end of the year is 5%, but the funds in the the, the mutual funds and the ETFs and the other things that your 401k is invested to has fees that exceed 5%, guess what? They're eating into your profit. They're eating into your profit. Not to mention the flaw with 401ks is that you're gonna get taxed on the backside when you start to collect those distributions at a time where you have retired and don't have that income. So at a time in your life where you want as much of what you earned as you can possibly get, you're going to get taxed. <coughs> Doodler, take care, man. Have a good one. Thanks for tuning into the show. So biotech, I hope I, hope I did not offend you because that was not my intention. Thank you, Kathleen. But the, the, the myth that 401ks are good generally is a lie. If you can find a good 401k provider that clearly states their fees and they stick to that and it is a reasonable fee to you, right on. You're well aware that the distributions on the backside are going to be taxed and you're cool with that, then right on. It's the unwitting or uneducated individual that gets sucked into these sales presentations at these employ where they work and they and they go all they see is the dude shows them the compounding interest over 30 year chart and pounds the gavel on there'll be an employer match it's like free money stop it stop it wall street case in point march of last year a whole world goes into fight you know just right into the toilet, right? 
Wall Street had the best year of their friggin' year. Well, Main Street is sucking air. Hmm. Why is that? Did your wages go up last year? No. What? Asset values go up? Yeah, some asset values went up. How many assets in that basket of 401k products went up? Because although the S&P 500 is large and full of five, you know, 500 companies, only the top 10 made any significant gains. Matter of fact, only 10 of the S&P 500 outpaced the monetary expansion. Hmm. How good of an investment is that really? Let's see. All of us that are out there exchanging our time for dollars are having to work exponentially harder to lose ground. So it's a matter, it's not a matter if you're going to lose ground, it's how much ground are you going to lose? If you do nothing, you're going to lose 30%. 24% actually, 24% monetary expansion. So cost of capital, 24,000, 24 grand. Sorry, 24%. Yeah. So if you go out there and you work 24% harder just to break even, what kind of crap is that? Wall Street, all those fund managers, they got paid. Even though you didn't profit, you didn't beat the cost of inflation, they got paid. So anyway, <laughs> that's my spiel. Brady, tell me get off my horse. This is getting ridiculous. It's the it's those fees. They got us high on fumes. The fee the fumes. Read of fees. your <laughs> prospectus. Read your prospectus. I know it's a ton of that little tiny print, but read it or corner the fund manager and say, I would like a list. I would like to know exactly your fee rates on every single element of this plan, because what they'll do is they won't have just one fee. There'll be three or four different fees. Sometimes five. I've heard as high as seven. I've never personally seen a prospectus that you know that outlined seven different fees. Most of them are four. All right, here we go. Heirloom. Nice for you to tune in. And Steve Willits, nice for you to tune in. Hey, Jerry and gang, good idea to have a plan for exp exponential growth to the upside, downside, and sideways. Well, heirloom, it sounds like you're very compassionate, level-headed person, I don't plan for the downside. I just don't plan for the downside. Here's the thing. If this whole crypto market went to zero tomorrow, I am screwed. That's just the truth. I'll be honest. So I do not have an all-weather bulletproof strategy or portfolio. <clears throat> I am 100% dependent on this market continuing to grow. <laughs> I I think it, it would almost lose. It's like the opportunity cost or the just being blissfully unaware may, may end up costing more, but it's almost like it's, it's like no, knowing that you're hundred percent in, you kind of can't take your foot off the throttle by holding cash because then you know how much that so it's like this weird never-ending loop of you either go deeper or you lose <laughs> i don't know or you go home it yeah it's well intense. no there's i think there's middle ground i i i, I this this patreon group i can't say enough about it it's so diverse the members in this group right and because i put the group together i'm the one getting all these one-on-one -on -one meetings every week with the membership and it's what a what a great group of people anyway i've got folks in the group that could not do could not put an don't have to put another penny into anything and they're fine i've got people that actually have to continue have to continue to work and have 
to find an investment strategy to build a retirement because they don't have a retirement and they're not 25 anymore. So there's this whole, you know, this whole swath of people that are doing different things. And one of the things I find really interesting is that aside from the value creation element of investing, that to a man, every person that I'm communicating with on these one-on-ones every week is engaged in a process of learning and understanding an entire element of their life that they were kind of oblivious to prior. It, in other words, they're coming to this group not financially literate. They've understood how to make money, save money, what money is, but learning about how money's created, how money works, how value is transferred, all these magical little things. Once you get a, like a peek behind the curtain, go a long way in informing the, the future decisions that you're going to make around value, whether it's the creation of your investment strategy, uh, whether it's the way you budget your life, uh, the decisions that you make. Do I move? Do I stay? Do I downsize? Do I upsize? All these type of things, when you kind of start to understand and get to look behind that curtain and start understanding, you know, debt cycles, how is debt created? How is currency created? Who's pulling the trigger on risk rates? Like how, how do how do interest rates come into be? Who sets those things? What's the policy behind those things? What are the mechanisms that would have something go this way or that way? You get a look behind the curtain, it start you start to get a much clearer picture, and it makes it easier <clears throat> to dictate forward direction or action, what you are going to do. <laughs> Kelly, Kelly. Yeah, we all know how money is created all right. A few keystrokes. Sometimes it is that simple. Sometimes it is that simple. Brady, I want to close this thing out. I'm looking at the clock. Any final thoughts, sir, on your experience with Mark Corla's show or the topics that Jungle brought up or any comments that you gleaned from the chat that you feel are worthy of, you know, addressing again before we say goodnight? Yeah, taxes are a pain in the ass. <laughs> not not just to pay them, but to figure out how to. Uh, it's what is it? It's not avoid. It's no, avoiding is legal. Evading isn't. <laughs> and trying to figure out how to balance the two, and you know, you, you, you look at people making money in the real estate market and you're thinking, all right, well then there's, that's the place to do it. But do they put $6,000 or do they max out their Roth, uh, their Roth plans before then going into other investments? So it's like, you need to either go around and ask all the people that do this and try and figure out what, what their strategy is, or you go on YouTube and try and soak up as much information as you can and ask, the people that do have all these instruments and try to parse out for yourself what makes the most sense. Because it's not just what you, it's not just having the numbers go up, it's how do you not give away so much in your taxes? So it's, yeah, I guess it's a never ending story, which is exactly what makes taxes worth it. I don't know. I think we found something that requires <laughs> further investigation, right? Exactly. Which is just great, right? Learning and, and, and becoming more literate is a good thing, right? It's a great thing. Bida, I want to address your question real quick. I feel we need to discuss what Jungle said in detail. Here's it in a, I, I can only summarize the context. Jungle likes the control of using pre-tax dollars to acquire assets, knowing he'll have a tax liability on the backside, but he believes he's literate enough to adjust and amend and work that into his favor. But then again, Jungle is kind of a tax expert. That's kind of his thing. 
I'm not. Um, and there was something up here. Hang on a second. Ellie Poole, I want to leave on this note. Once the crypto market takes its place, what would come off the stock market? That's a really interesting question. There is, and it's been reported, $240 trillion in capital markets. That's stocks, bonds, real estate, commodities, derivatives, blah, 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 real estate funds, blah, blah, all that stuff. How much of that goes into crypto? I don't know. You would think if, if crypto is a superior monetary net, you know, set of networks and protocols, that it would garner a tremendous amount of that. But then again, time horizon. How long? I don't know. I know that we are all, all of us that are tuned into this show right now, are so early. We're part of the first 150 million people on the planet to get into this. In a population of 7 plus billion with this market cap of one and a half trillion out of an addressable 240 trillion. So one and a half trillion into 240 trillion. Brady, am I doing it right by saying we have less than 0.5% of the total addressable funds ish 0.5% of the total money. I, I like that ish. <laughs> well, we if you round it. roundish, roundish, <laughs> ishy. So under a half a percent, well, if it gets to a percent, we've doubled. If it gets to 2%, we've doubled again. I like those words. Can, can these financial digital networks, these economic models of energy efficiency and you know, all this wonderful cost savings and dismediation of the middlemen that are taking rent and fees in the middle. Can these things gain some ground? Can we get to 5%, 6%? I'm telling you, I am fairly certain that I feel confident in saying that. The folks that are in here now, this thing gets to 5% of the total adjustable market of that $240 trillion. That's $10 trillion, right? $10 trillion, that's 900% from where we are right now. If my portfolio grew 900% tomorrow, I would most likely um, do other things. I'd be busy building a house. <laughs> I would. Well, I'd be but build you, you'd come back here on Fridays, though. No, I, dude, I'd have so much <laughs> money that I could seriously buy a drone, buy a couple of really nice cameras, buy the little mobile microphones that you put in your shirt and walk you all through the process of how I built Hacienda Jerry Hall. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to hold you to it. You, you know what I mean? So, uh, folks, the comp, lovingly known as, in the Patreon group, the compound, which will have beautiful bungalows for any of you that want to come and visit Costa Rica. It's going to be cool. We'll do little tokens. Like each bungalow will have a token on a blockchain that represents each day of the year. And you can go to the little the little Jerry Hall YouTube channel website thingy and get your own, you know, and say, oh, shoot, January 3rd through the 6th, those tokens are available. Let's go to Costa Rica. Or I'm going to take the whole month of March. Or whatever. And just get your coins and come on down. All right, guys. Brady, thank you so much for being willing to share your, your like, a real thing that was part of your life. And thank you, all of you, that continue to tune in and support this channel, as well as do things like use the affiliate links that are in the description below. That helps, that helps me a little bit. And for those of you that are members of the Patreon group, um, thanks. It's wonderful. And if you're considering it, we still have a couple slots left. There are a few slots in the Patreon group that are still available. So hit the like, smash that thing, crush it, and come back next week because we'll do another show on another topic. 
that'll help you become a better investor tomorrow than you are today. If I did nothing else tonight, I hope that I stimulated you to think about something specific to your situation and provide you a course of study so that you increase your financial literacy. So on behalf of my producer, Brady, myself, thank you so very much. And we'll see you right here next week on Market Conversations. Pura Vida.